Hello folks, Jason Crispin here, JC's Bees. In today's video I want to show you how I just recently boosted the brood in those weak nukes I shared a couple weeks ago. Um, I think it might be beneficial for you, maybe even if you don't have nukes, but how to boost weaker colonies and a simple method of doing so. But real quickly, I wanted to point out, um, I've had a lot of people ask me since my last video about mites if I've been using my homemade ProVap. And I thought it would be neat if I just went ahead and took a second and explained the homemade ProVap that I made. To this point in the season, my main um, method of breaking down the mites or making the mite count lower in the hives has just been making splits. When you make splits and they go broodless for a couple weeks, that greatly drops the mite load naturally. So for that reason, I haven't had to resort to the homemade ProVap. But now, I do, because you know, obviously I'm not gonna make splits this late in the year. So here recently, I've been working to fine tune the settings in my ProVap. It's very, very difficult to understand all these different settings on the uh, Inkbird PID. There's so many of them that it's kind of overwhelming. Um, the problem I'm having is the ideal temperature that you should have your ProVap set to to vaporize is 446 degrees Fahrenheit. Um, when I set my PID to that, it climbs way over um, almost to 600 degrees and then drops way below and takes forever to get back to the 446. So I went to pull out my uh, K-type thermocouple and when you know, since the threads on that steel bolt don't really like the threads from aluminum, uh, the head broke off. So this is the hole right here where that was. So when I removed the heating element that was around here, um, what happened was I noticed that the copper coupling that was pushed onto my aluminum bowl was very, very loose. Um, I guess the heat made it expand, which makes sense. So what I did was I took the, uh, the bowl and I gave it a quarter turn and then I took a, a nail punch and went around and made some indents in the copper. And I hit it hard enough that it pushed it into the aluminum. So now they're one solid piece again. So. I'm currently waiting today for my new thermocouple to come in. I'm going to put that back in. I also ordered uh, another heating element because during all this experimenting and it getting so hot, for some reason my uh, band heater burn up. So I've got two coming any minute now UPS should be pulling in and dropping those off. So here soon I hope to be using my ProVap. I needed to be using it like a week and a half ago, which is why I was fine tuning it and then all of it went downhill really quick. So now I've got this fixed, everything's tight. My thermocouple will be here today and I hope to do some fine tuning tonight and do a treatment this weekend. So there will be a video, an update on the homemade ProVap. So stay tuned for that. And let's get over and check out how I boosted these nukes. Okay, so to begin with, I have removed the supers. I've removed the queen excluder and I am now inside the top brood box. My plans now are to go frame by frame looking for beautiful full frames of cat brood. And if these same frames happen to have some food stores around the top, that's not going to hurt anything at all. Now the frame I'm looking at here is a good candidate for what I need, boosting the brood and other colonies. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to shake off the bees and I'm going to remove it over to a nuke that I've got sitting over to the side to make transporting these frames a lot easier. So you know you don't really think about it when you go to do this but the frames you take need to be replaced so you need to bring an empty box to stick the frames in that you're taking and you also need to bring some either drone comb frames preferably this time of year, or um, some foundation frames and hope that they get drawn out and some food stored in them in time. We are coming up on fall, so resources will be running short before long. So you don't want to add too many frames of just foundation. Um, you kind of want to shy away from that as much as possible. And here is my filler frames. Replace what I took. 
and I will move on to the next colony. Okay, colony number 47. Remove the queen excluder. Um, some of you might be wondering what that green frame is. That green frame is drone comb. That's a way of managing mites. Beautiful frame of brood. Look at all that. Cells from side to side, top to bottom. There's not even room for food on that frame. Yep, we'll use it. Beautiful candidate for what we're looking for. So now that we've collected enough frames to go around and fill some nukes, uh, I'm going to pop open the nukes and I'm going to start adding these brood frames. I don't want the brood to chill and uh, recently temperatures are starting to feel more like fall. Of course it's ideal, if possible, to stick the brood as close to the cluster of bees as possible so they're able to keep it warm and take care of this brood as it starts to emerge. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to remove uh, a frame that the bees haven't really paid any attention to, which is usually the one closest to the feeder, the frame feeder. And I'm going to sandwich a brood frame in between the other two frames that the bees are on in this nuke. Now the empty cells in this frame might look like they're empty, but the queen has already backfilled and they are completely laid out in eggs and larvae. So it's a beautiful frame. And look at that nice white capping on the honey there at the top. Lovely. I'm going to go ahead and top off or add some uh, syrup to their frame feeder. Keep the girls with plenty of food. We've got some rainstorms bouncing around, so when we get these rainy days, of course, the bees aren't out working. So I want them to have resources in the hive so they can still build comb and fill comb with food. Now to put everything back together. Top box back on. Make sure you don't squish any girls. Inner cover back on. And the outer lid. And we'll move on to the next one. Of course it works just the same when you're filling the nukes. If you have to take a frame out to stick in your brood frame, then you need to remember to pick up those frames and not leave them strung out all over your bee yard. This hive that you're looking at is a little unique. You just noticed that I removed the top box, I had an inner cover between them, and then the bottom box with bees. This is done this way for one reason. I do not want to give the bees more room than they can manage. Um, what that will do is create a pest problem. Wax moths, move in, wax moths will move into the top box and destroy all the comb. Or hive beetles, and I don't want either. So for that reason, I've stuck the inner cover between the two boxes, and um, once I feel that the bees are ready to have the second box, the inner cover will be removed, and the bees can freely move up. So as you can see here, I am making room once again for my brood frame. Once again, I removed the frame closest to the feeder. Look at that. All that beautiful white capping on that frame. Go ahead and top off the feeder. I've had a lot of people ask me uh, or you know suggest I should be feeding pollen patties, but at the same time, if I start feeding pollen patties right now, I'm going to be infested with hive beetles. So I don't want to do that until the temperatures get a little bit cooler. I would really like to, but I am staying away from that at the moment. Put the inner cover back on. Put the top box back on. Now 
make sure everything's good and squared up and put the top cover back on next box now this box is a little bit fuller than the rest of them so for that reason I ended up sticking the brood in the top box look at this so here's a good for instance we've got bees between all of the frames this box is pretty much full so what I need to do is add the brood to the top box but first I'm gonna go ahead and fill up the feeder or at least add some to it I want to be careful when you're topping off these feeders um, I've noticed with my scoopy cup here that when I scoop up the syrup and go to take it to the feeder if I don't hold the the cup over top of the bucket for a minute and let all the drippings drip into the bucket it creates a trail from the bucket over to the beehive and what that can cause is robbing so be very careful not to dribble all over the place I'm gonna remove a frame here in the top and I know just moments ago I said it's best to keep the brood close to the colony but this colony I believe is strong enough that some of the bees will move up and it may even encourage the queen to move into the top and start laying so I'm gonna take that risk we will see whether the queen moves up so what do you think folks you ever consider using uh, a stronger colony to take some frames from of brood and to stick in the weaker ones it's a great way to boost the population really really quick so keep that tool in your back pocket maybe you won't need it this time of the year but maybe next spring next summer that's going to come in handy now look over here look how active the bees are today you know we're starting to see uh, goldenrod bloom and uh, just just on the edge of starting to bloom so not a whole lot of pollen coming in yet but the bees are definitely active I've seen uh, everything from this what this is called uh, smart weed it's also there's also a white smart weed um, so besides this I'm seeing stuff like bone set um, all these you can google bone set uh, burdock which is a big favorite this time of the year to see the bees on um, usually in the fall and the winter is when we dread that the bees pollinated that plant because of the burrs they leave behind um, the goldenrod will be busting I would say in the next week it's going to be a, a nice flow going here on the goldenrod and you'll probably notice um, if your bees are working goldenrod without even opening the hives and the reason for that is is goldenrod nectar has a very pungent smell and you might think I'm making this up but it smells like sweaty gym socks yep sweaty gym socks so it's got a very pungent smell to it um, there is no nectar that smells anything like goldenrod honey or nectar but I'll tell you if you harvest any of that it's gonna be some of the best honey you've had fall honey is one of my favorites it's got that dark color and uh, in case you don't know the darker the honey the more antioxidants that are in it so keep that in your back pocket too and hey, if you like these videos, don't forget to subscribe. And uh, if you enjoyed this one, throw me a big thumbs up, and that'll help boost it in the YouTube search ranks and make it easier for other beekeepers and other people to enjoy. Thanks for watching JC's Bees. Mm -hmm.